So for those of you who do not know, about one month ago, I think it was actually back in August, I went to Facebook headquarters in London and what a great time I did have over there. So, well, it was a great experience first of all. Uh, I'll walk you through the day and I'll tell you how I got there as well. So basically in the morning, um, I knew I was going out to meet a Facebook ad expert. I didn't actually know I was going to Facebook headquarters, but it turns out that's exactly where I was going. And I was kind of like, wow, in shock, because I didn't actually know I was going there. Uh, but anyway, Deb, uh, I got the opportunity to, opportunity to go to Facebook ad headquarters. It's through a relation, a person that I met at an event. He said that he knew uh, someone inside of Facebook, and he got me inside of Facebook. So one important point that you guys have to learn is if you build a relationship with people or you get to know, network with loads of people, eventually you'll find someone that has exactly what you want. And you normally, you're probably normally taught as kids, you know, stranger danger, don't talk to strangers. But in fact, strangers have everything you could possibly want. So when you go up to people, when you start networking with them, they probably know someone who you want to get in contact with. So that's actually how I ended up in Facebook at headquarters. I met someone at an event that I went, a business event, and he knew someone on the inside of Facebook. So I managed to get in. So anyway, I run you through the day real quick, and it was really cool, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, in the morning, woke up, went to Facebook at headquarters, and it was only for one hour, to be honest, um, the time I spent there. Uh, but it was one hour well spent. So first of all, when we went there, I thought I had to sign in. I had to get the uh, literal, what's it called? What's the name? A name tag on me. Let me just pull that name tag out. So you guys know that I am not lying. Let me find it. Just give me one sec. A few moments later. Oh, oh, this is my box of really valuable stuff. Uh, somewhere in here. Aha. Uh -huh. Found it. So you can zoom in. Oh, it's not focusing. Focus camera. Stop with this focus. There. Maybe my name's spelled backwards. See, Alex, and it says, Andrew, I probably won't reveal this name. Facebook. But doom. Yeah. Okay, now it's super unfocused. That's so not useful. Let's move it back. Come on, HD quality. Let's go. Okay. Back in focus. Let's put all the stuff back. So, as I was saying, went there, got my name tag on, and they let me in. Not much security in there, they just, you know, they you go in after you swipe your card or something. So when I went up there, I met with this guy, and I'm not going to tell you his name, because I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, or something like that. Uh, but anyway, I met this guy, and he runs his own uh, social media marketing agency, and he also works on Facebook. He's one of the top people in the advertising sector, so he does all the Facebook ads for Facebook itself. Uh, he manages their ad account as well as a few other big brands ad account, which is something I'm going to be talking about in the video when we jump into the computer. Uh, but yeah, so I met up with him and we had a good talk, I asked him quite a lot of questions and these are the points I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Uh, but yeah, I just learned so much from him, so much value and it, it was really, uh, it was a great experience. I mean, it was much different to what I think it would be like. I thought it was just going to be rows and rows and rows of people working on their computer, uh, customer support if they have any or um, yeah but actually it was really fun I mean as soon as you walk in they have this huge canteen free food literally free food they had free desserts free sweet machine I'm gonna throw a video up right now um, let's just put it up on the screen but this is basically them uh, and their rows and rows and rows of retro sweets sweets like every single retro sweet sweet you could imagine they basically have it there and you can take as much as you can unfortunately i did not go, uh, get any but i will next time and i'll explain to you what i mean by that um but yeah so we went in and i actually saw one of a really big influencer in there he was doing a live and he's actually a magician i think his name is julius dean and he has over like 15 million followers on social media so he was there and it was kind of big kind of busy because they were all uh, helping out him out with setting up a live at the in a special room uh, but yeah, after they sorted that out and I got to see him um, then we went I went upstairs with the guy I was meeting with and he ran me through different things uh, that he does I asked him a ton of questions again I'm going to be going over that then he showed me the ad account of Facebook itself 
and a few other brands which is super cool I'm going to be going over that as well and yeah so we, we just basically talk for one hour and then after that I just boom I asked him a really cool question at the end which uh, I can't believe I got this but anyway I'll be telling you guys that at the end and yeah so that, that was basically I mean it was a great experience I learned quite a lot I saw quite a few things and upstairs, um, it was basically what I was expecting actually. Offices, just rows and rows of tables, computers, and um, Macs. But um, there was not many people there. I mean, this was, I think it was a Wednesday. Um, but there weren't many people there. And maybe that just tells you why their customer support is so bad. Because everyone's just downstairs in the canteen eating at 9am in the morning. Instead of upstairs replying to our banned account <laughs> Facebook issues. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, they just basically spend all their money on sweets and free food instead of actually paying for good customer service. But I'll also be addressing that in this video as well. Uh, but yeah, great experience there and I appreciate the guy who took me there and the connection that I found who actually gave me the opportunity. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, I'm going to be jumping into the computer telling you guys exactly what I learned from them and the inside Facebook secret hacks that you could learn from that as well. So that being said, let's just jump into it. Okay guys, so what did I learn from Facebook headquarters in London? So I'll be going over the main points, main 11 points I think is that I learned uh, from the guy who was taking me around and showing me around the place. So first of all, and this is probably the biggest, coolest thing I've done so far, is I looked inside Pretty Little Things ad account. And if you don't know who Pretty Little Things are, let me just go to their website, Pretty Little Things. And they are a big, a big fashion and clothing brand. You can see they post loads of clothing items. And they're really big in the UK. I'm pretty sure they're based in the UK. And I got to see, and let me just change this real quick. I got to see how they were spending $950,000 on ads. And this is just on their one ad account. And they've made back from direct spend from their ads over 60 million pounds. That's no joke. So they had this 60 ROAS on their advertising spend. From $950,000 spent, they made back 60 million dollars. 60 ROAS, which is basically crazy. I mean, in terms of typical Shopify stores, you wouldn't see anything more than really a 5 ROAS, maybe a 10 ROAS, or 60 ROAS is insane, especially for the consistency over such a big amount of revenue they have generated. And the only reason they've got uh, done this, they made this possible, is just because their branding is on point. So if you have a normal Shopify store, the likelihood of you getting a 60 ROAS is basically, it's basically impossible because you can't do it if you don't have a proper established brand. The reason that people buy from Pretty Little Things and why it's so popular and why the conversion rates are so high on their store is because people trust the brand, people relate to the brand and people can know that it's not some scammy uh, dropship website because that's what some people think when they come onto sites that all look the same, normal Shopify ones. So the reason they've been able to do this is basically because they branded yourself and if you really want to expand in the future, if you want to build a sustainable business on the Shopify platform or at least an e-commerce business, you have to build a brand. Now you have to brand your products, you have to get it private labeled, but that's all worth it because it's going to be sustainable and you can do it over a long time. If you're just you know, staying with dropshipping the whole time and you think dropshipping is the end goal, you want to dropship for whole your life, that is not going to work. The dropshipping business model is probably going to be exposed by the next three years and that's basically it and by the three years from now you have to be building out a proper brand if you want to succeed and if you aren't starting to do it now by building out you know a proper website um, not from the get-go but really once you start learning and you start making sales if you don't starting if you're not starting to build a real brand then eventually in the future your all your success was just short term and you have to do your own thing later because you've been just left out for the future race the real race is in the future not what happens in the short term it's all about the long term so they were getting purchases for less than one pound now i actually saw the ad account the guy showed me and he runs a social media a marketing agency like i mentioned and it's called social amp i'm pretty sure and i'm not sure how many figures they do a month but obviously they have such a big client with them they probably do multiple six figures at least every single month i think they also run ads for a tv show called south park and my protein um i'm pretty sure that's what he said anyway 
Uh, but yeah, so yeah, they had purchased this for less than one pound, and the key this guy told me for why they were getting this is because they were running DPA ads. And for those of you who don't know what DPA ads are, and I didn't know back in the time, it was actually dynamic product ads. So what are dynamic product ads? Well, I've actually heard about dynamic pro product ads before I went to the, the meetup, and really I haven't been utilizing it, I haven't really looked into it because I just thought hey, that's something I could do in the future, but it's actually something you can be utilizing right now because of how powerful it is. So let me just break it down to you guys what it is. So a dynamic product ad is a form of retargeting ad that is unique to whatever visitor on your site was interested in the most. So I'm pretty sure you guys have seen loads of ads for items that you've been browsing for recently. Let's say you were browsing on a, uh, for watches on a shop brand, I mean a watch brand, whatever that might be. All of a sudden you see um, ads across you know, Google, you see ads across Facebook, across Instagram, showing you different watches or showcasing you different watches. And that's all because people have, are basically retargeting you based on what you've been most interested in. So what a DPA ad does is it, it basically runs automatically and it targets the people that have viewed a specific product and it tells them, hey, come back and buy this item. And it's, um, it's sort of similar to retar retargeting, but it's based off exactly what product that, that the viewer on your website has seen and it, the ad automatically changes and adapts to whatever that viewer has seen. So that's basically what DPA ads are. And if you really want to scale your uh, store, you have to be running DPA ads consistently. You have to set them up and let them work because retargeting is the easiest and the cheapest way to bring in low cost purchases to your website. So basically how you do it, it's really simple. As long as you have the Facebook pixel on your website, and if you want to know how, how to get the Facebook pixel on your website, I'm sure there's hundreds of YouTube videos on there. But as you can see, pretty little things. See, they have a Facebook pixel on their website. As long as you, as long as you have that on your website, and you also have a Facebook catalog set up. So on Facebook itself, there's something called a catalog, which basically showcases all your products. And I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but there's this for some brands at least. There's a, a little shop icon. There's a little shop icon on their Instagram post, and that's basically because they've connected their Facebook catalog to their Instagram page. So when people click on that little shop but shopping cart button, they can click on the Instagram um, post itself and they'll be linked directly to a store. And that's basically another way you can get link clicks, uh, visitors to your store. But uh, the way you set it up by, is by setting up a Facebook catalog. That's pretty simple to do. I'm sure there's, again, hundreds of YouTube videos out there on how to do that. Uh, but once you have the pixel installed and you've set up your Facebook pixel, all you need to do is... Um, Really, the dynamic product ads will do all the work. They'll just pull whatever product uh, from the catalog that a visitor has seen, and it'll, it'll take it from the catalog and showcase it to the person around Facebook and around Instagram. Uh, for Google AdWords, you can, again, you can do this on multiple platforms. Uh, for Google AdWords, you have the uh, Google Analytics tracking number or something like that. And when uh, Google picks up what item this specific person I've viewed, They'll show that ad to uh, a specific ad to the person wherever they go around the internet, and it's pretty easy to set up. So that's basically the main point. Again, that was super cool seeing again uh, inside pretty little things ad account, and I'm sure they have multiple ad accounts. But, and I'm not sure exactly how long it took them to do this 660 million. Um, all I saw was this number and the ROAS, which is what got me really hyped up. I actually took, tried to take a video of the guy showing me around the ad account and I'll put the video up right now. Um, may I have more magic? Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. Okay. Um, right, do you want to see a sponge rabbit trick or a car trick? <laughs> sponge rabbit. Sponge rabbit, okay, here we go, check this out. Well, as you guys can see, I didn't really get any uh, much out of that because again, you weren't allowed to take videos inside there. So I tried to do my best, but. I failed you guys. I'm sorry, but anyway, so that's point number one. We have 11 points, so let's just start moving on. Number two is a scaling strategy. Uh, so again, this guy, he runs multiple uh, the ads for multiple brands, and he says when it comes to scaling, you want to create lookalike audiences for every single measurable thing. So Facebook measures initiate checkouts. Facebook get, uh, measures um, add to cart. They, me they measure purchases. They uh, measure uh, add to pay uh, payment added method and they also measure 
for your content. So what you want to do is you want to create lookalike audiences for every single one of these things and you want to keep on increasing the percentage audience. So for those of you who don't know what lookalike is, it's basically when you select a certain country and you give Facebook an audience, uh, a custom audience, a base of people who have viewed your website or added to cart or purchase. You give that audience to Facebook and they'll identify the attributes of this list of people. They see what's most similar, what's the thing that's most in common with these people. They pull that out and they put this into this uh, algorithm that generates 2.1 million people in the US that are most similar to whatever uh, interest or whatever custom audience you've put in there. So I'll give you an example. So let's say 10,000 people have purchased something from my website. You now have this list of 10,000 people. What you do is now you upload this li list to Facebook. Facebook will analyze each one of these 10,000 people and because they have tons of data on these people because Facebook just knows a ton of data about people based off their who they're following, who they like, who they talk to, who they engage with and but other things, other third party companies give them loads of uh, info about people as well. And they take all this info and they see what's similar with these uh, 10,000 people and let's say let's say all these 10,000 people love dogs, uh, they're all parents with three to five year olds then Facebook will take a list of 2.1 or 1% uh, people who are most similar to that audience and you can start targeting those people. So because it's 1% of this audience, it will be super, super targeted. If it's 2%, it will be less targeted. But what the guy says is he says keep on increasing the percent uh, that your audience uh, size is. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Keep on going up until your ROAS significantly drops. And by significantly drops, I mean goes below your uh, break-even point. So you have to know what your break-even ROAS is. So for most, uh, obviously it's above one. So you have to be doing getting at least one ROAS on your products. So obviously you're not profitable. Uh, but yeah, keep increasing the percent until your ROAS significantly drops. So create a lookalike on everything. And he says do multiple countries as well. So you can do the United Kingdom, United States, Canada, Australia. And he says for most of the brands he works with, he does uh, a ton of uh, top tier one countries. But there are other countries he does advertise to, but he doesn't recommend it for Shopify stores. I'll get into that. Why? But anyway, so that's getting strategies on Facebook. Number three is test testing strategy on Facebook. So I specifically asked him, how would you go about testing a new product? Let's say if I have 100 products lined up and I want to cheaply test them or at least effect effectively test them, how would you do it? And he says, never do PPA testing, even if it's just to validate a product. And personally, I kind of don't exactly stand for that because sometimes PPE, PPE testing, and that is page post engagement, is actually a, a really cheap and effective way to find out your, if your product's going to work or not. And the reason I say that is because if you're on a budget, you can easily test products, see if people are engaging with them and see if people are clicking on your ad for only $3 for one single product. If you're doing a conversion campaign, you need to be spending at least you need to be running an ad at $5 a day for at least 3 days and at least 10 ad sets. So that's immediately $150 just to test one product and that doesn't mean it'll get you any money whatsoever. So would you rather spend $150 testing one product or $3 testing one product, which is the same as $50, uh, $150 to test 50 products? I would rather do the PPE testing method to be honest, but he doesn't necessarily agree with it. I just kind of see why, because it's not exactly... People might not be engaging with the ad, but they still might be buying it. Uh, so again, he does have a point when he says don't use PPE. But I personally think I wouldn't rule out the the potential factor of using PPE testing. So number four, and this is a really, really big one that I've seen a load of people ask about and message me about. And that is how to avoid Facebook ad ban bans. Now, it's basically certain it's like... In inevitable that your Facebook ad account will get banned once or twice and mine has been banned multiple times just because I did not follow the rules like I'm going to mention right now uh, but the guy what he says is now he works really closely with the, the the department that handles with all this these issues what he says is as long as you follow the rules follows the policies and don't cross the line don't even go near the line of where your content might be seen as uh, they might be flagged for being inappropriate or being uh, copyrighted or anything like that. Just just don't do any of that and just run run ads as normal. Just As long as you follow the rules, you don't go too near to the line of 
um, this is not going to be right, we're going to have to turn your account down for multiple violations, then you will be fine advertising on Facebook. Now again, it will happen eventually, and I think if it happens free time, your whole Facebook account gets disabled, which is something you really don't want to happen to you. But what he says is always reappeal for everything that gets disapproved. So for example, if you have an ad set that is disapproved and you find out that uh, the ad itself, an error comes up on the ad saying content is uh, inappropriate or content does not follow uh, community guidelines or something like that. If you think that it does, and make sure you review it because it might not follow the guidelines. Um, and you have to change it. But if you review it and you say, hey, I went through the rules, this is all right, just just write back to them and just reappeal saying, this ad is fine, I think this is an accidental flag by your system. And he says this does happen, uh, happen often, but the reason it happens is because they want to keep Facebook a really safe and secure platform. They don't want anything spammy or tacky coming out on their ads. It will just give them a bad reputation and it will dissatisfy their customers who are the users. So again, you can always reappeal for ads and if you don't want them to stay disapproved uh, but make sure you check them of course because normally when it, they do get disapproved there is something in it and you have to go through that policy so again one thing you always have to remember is to follow the rules follow the rules follow the rules i can't emphasize that more always follow the rules because you don't want to get caught out you don't want to get into trouble of not following the rules and then you end up in a deep pit where you can't really or you can't advertise on facebook anymore which is something you don't want to do but anyway, let's say if it does happen and you didn't follow the rules like I just told you to, which is very silly anyway, but if it does happen, your account is down, one thing you have to do, he says, is to generally apologise. You want to, from the sincere sincerity of your heart, just genuinely apologise to them, write a good lengthy message explaining how it was your fault, how it will never actually happen again, and an action plan of what you were doing said for not making sure it will not happen. So whenever uh, an account gets banned, obviously you have an appeal process, and humans are actually viewing this. He told me everything that, every response that gets sent, even though the response might be canned responses, which means that they're copy and paste responses, they just change the personalize the name at the bottom, humans do review everything that you send. So if it seems like just you getting really angry at them, they'll just send you the automatic uh, response message that says I'm sorry but this decision is final and we can't explain to you why and that's really annoying but if, you be, if you're actually genuine you write them a sincere apology note and you write it professionally you don't make you don't say hey this is annoying you guys are idiots and stuff like that then a human a real human will read it through and they won't send you the canned normal response that they send to everyone else just because you're being genuine so Facebook he told me literally that Facebook won't they don't care if one person is uh, not going to be advertising on the platform anymore because they're making so much money from everyone else that's advertising that one user getting banned does not affect them at all. But if you're sincere and you write them a genuine note and you follow up on them consistently, uh, a human will eventually read it and they'll, you know, they'll reinstate your account. So that's one thing that you I would do if I were you, uh, uh, if I'm you and I had my account disabled. So. I wish I had a drink, I have nothing left. Ah, anyway, so whitelisting the accounts. So you might have heard of this before. Uh, it's basically the opposite of blacklisting an account. And if you don't don't know what blacklisting is, it's basically like Facebook's hit list. Facebook has a list of accounts that aren't performing or are kind of dodgy. There's unusual activity on the account or stuff like that. So what you can do is you can get your account whitelisted opposite of black obviously um, by Facebook so the only way you can do this as far as I know is by being really favored by them as in you spent a ton of money on ads so I don't know an example of a company that spends a ton of money in ads uh, but I know Facebook have whitelisted their own Facebook ad account which basically means that Facebook protects itself from being banned uh, but let's say f Facebook was protecting pretty little things which I'm not sure it is but Facebook protects the pretty little things ad account, make sure it doesn't get disabled, that data doesn't, the pixel doesn't go, or something goes wrong, and the ads get up instantly, they have a quicker review time and process and stuff like that. So you can get whitelisted, but the only way you can do this is again by spending a ton of money on their platform, or you actually know someone on in the inside, let's say if you're like Mark Zuckerberg's cousin or something. Actually, I don't think he'll white -light, will whitelist that account even. But if you're really close to someone on the inside, maybe Mark or whoever's in charge will consider it. 
Uh, but yeah, I did actually see the Facebook uh, ad account itself. I didn't really see it properly. Again, I tried to take a video of it, but I didn't see much. I think uh, the space of memory of the numbers I like blurly saw. I didn't have my glasses on, so I couldn't see properly. But they spent 21 million on ads, as far as I know, and this is just for live streams and other things uh, that they promote. Uh, so I know when I was there, Julius Dean again, the magician. Um, I'm not going to show his Instagram. He has like six million followers on Instagram. Uh, but they were doing it uh, live for him. And while he was, the guy was talking to me, he was actually setting up the ads uh, for the, to promote the live stream. And he was inside the Facebook ad account, uh, setting up the ads to, to boost the live uh, as it was live. And basically the ads got accepted instantly, um, which just shows you know, the account is really favoured by themselves. Yeah, I think they spent like 21 million. And I didn't see how much I made back on that though, because they didn't have those filters set up. Uh, but anyways... Number five, and we are halfway through, or nearly halfway through, is Facebook ad reps. So this is something that I was curious about, um, because I know loads of people had Facebook ad reps, and I wanted to know what is the specific amount I need to be spending on Facebook to get a Facebook ad rep, which is basically someone who comes in every month, every week, that t talks to you over the phone. I don't think they meet up with you personally, but they talk to you, you and give you tips on how to advertise, how to improve your advertising spend, and... Um, basically other tips for Facebook ads and according to him they're just randomly assigned the top advertisers there's no specific limit there's no specific budget that you need to be spending in order to get one they are just randomly assigned to top advertisers and they help you manage your account so as far as I know you could be spending a hundred thousand dollars a month and you could have a rep and but another person might be spending two hundred thousand dollars a month and they don't have a rep, so it really depends. But I'm not. I still didn't get a really clear understanding on the Facebook ad reps. But number six is how much budget should your ad sets be spending initially? So this guy again, he manages a social media marketing agency, and he says if you aren't getting fifty conversions a week for a specific objective, uh, for example, add to card, initiate checkout purchase or view content then you shouldn't optimize uh, for it on the convergence objective so let's say if you're only getting 50 ad to cuts a week then you shouldn't be advertising for and um, optimizing for purchases according to him because Facebook does not have enough data to uh, identify what a purchase is unless of course you had 50 ad to cuts 50 purchases which is basically I don't think that's going to happen uh, but yeah 50 conversions a week on a specific um, uh, conversion event and personally I don't recommend waiting to get 50 conversions um, for a specific conversion event the reason I say that is because when I started my new store and I started Facebook ads I was getting sales really easily even though I had no data on the pixel whatsoever so I think it doesn't matter if you have the conversions on your pixel or not of course it really does help uh, if you're scaling and if you have like 10,000 uh, purchases on your pixel then you have a ton of data and Facebook has a ton of data to work off on who to target and um, how to maximize your ROAS for the money that you are spending on that platform. So according to him, you shouldn't optimize for these conversion rents, but I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend what he's saying. But he says he starts off at $50 a day when he's testing a new product. But again, this is because, he, you know, Pretty Little Things has a ton of money to spend on ads. I mean, of course they do. They have like a 60 ROAS. Uh, but he starts at $50 a day, um, he says that's a good budget to test. He leaves them on for a couple of days, he says at least a week, um, which is obviously quite a bit for beginners uh, because they don't have $350 to test on a single product. He's also said it depends on how much you have. You should budget accordingly to what you have uh, to spend on Facebook ads. Uh, but yeah, that depends. So, number seven, I might take a quick break right now because my throat is, is getting really dry. I'll be back in one second. Mm, fresh apple juice. Mm. That's good. Hey okay, guys, so where was I? So number seven, Instagram TV ads and WhatsApp ads. So I, I think I have posted a video recently about Instagram TV, or at least I'm going to be posting one soon about it. Um, but again, the, uh, the guy said he can't reveal too much information on what is going on with Instagram TV ads and WhatsApp ads. And if you guys don't already know, Facebook owns Instagram and WhatsApp. And Instagram TV has come out really recently, maybe around a month or two months old. And the view for, or the vision for Instagram TV is basically to be the next 
up and coming YouTube or basically B Tech YouTube for the time being. And what you can do on that platform is post videos as long as you want. And now at the moment, Instagram doesn't let you post videos longer than a minute long. And but with Instagram TV, you can post videos as long as you want. And you can have a channel on Instagram TV. And they're planning to monetize the users on the platform. So Instagram will pay the people who are using or uh, the the channels on the Instagram TV ad platform based off you know how many views they're getting or how much engagement they're getting. But you can't reveal too much information on it. For IGTV, there's definitely nothing coming out soon. If you did uh, wonder about that, he says they're looking to grow the, uh, the user base for the time being. IGTV does have its own app, which people are starting to find out about. And recently, um, they've started putting IGTV on the explore page of Instagram. So if you don't know what the explore page is, it's basically where the top posts uh, for the day or for the last couple of hours are. And they started putting IGTV uh, videos on the explore page, meaning more people are getting um, familiar with the platform and the user base will be built up. So there's nothing coming up with IGTV soon because it's only like one month old. I think nothing for the next year, he said, would be there. But for WhatsApp ads, again, nothing's in plan for the next um, for the next year for sure. But what's drive to WhatsApp ads will be coming out soon. So what he says is, um, like Messenger ads, you can have drive to Messenger ads. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you click on the button and it sends you Direct, directly to Messenger, where, where people can start advertising to you. It's the same with that. Uh, with WhatsApp, you can click on an app, uh, an ad on Facebook or Instagram, and it sends you directly to the WhatsApp app, and they'll uh, an advertiser can start promoting to you, following say the same or similar guidelines to Facebook uh, Messenger, and the, people will obviously come up with bots to fulfill the advertising process like many chats for Facebook Messenger but he did say that that is definitely on the cards and that will be coming out soon but number eight is what does Facebook think about influencer marketing which is something I was really interested in learning about because you know Facebook is not making any money from influencers whatsoever if you think about it the, um, in the process between me and paying the influencer the only person getting money is me and the influencer, not Facebook uh, or Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, because Facebook aren't involved in this process. So I was thinking, you know, if Facebook aren't involved in this process that's making or generating influencers at least billions and billions of dollars every single year, you know, they should be doing something about it. I mean, they're just missing out on a ton of money. But to be honest with you, the guy said they literally don't care because they make so much money from their ads, their own advertising platform, Anyway, that, you know, the millions of influencers that are getting paid, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month, they really don't care about the money they're making because it's like pennies compared to what they're making, or at least it's not even a, it's not that much of a considerable amount compared to what they're making. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I do know for a fact that a uh, page with 100,000 followers would be, would be making at least $500 a month in ads and uh, I base that knowledge off of a few pages that I do know also the small narrator one I do have which I do not know why I have but I know I do make money out of it by not doing anything with it which I'll probably explain in a different video but basically I just have that account and I get paid for having it uh yeah we'll explain that later but anyway so yeah there are literally millions of influencers out there and billions are getting sent to them but Facebook don't care they don't mind it in their eyes it's actually a good thing that people are uh, promoting with these influencers because uh, first of all it's making the influencers money and the if, if the influencers are making money they're more dedicated and committed to spending more time on that platform you know creating content creating better content to get more advertisers to work with them and when they create better content they, the customers you know the real customers which are the, the users get more happy because they're seeing their favorite celebrity post better stuff and it's basically like a, a, a circle where we make money, the influencers make money, the fans are happy. But on the top, Facebook is making the most money out of all of us just because they control everything that's going on beneath, which is, it's just a really cool cycle. And you want to be on the top. If you, if your business is on the top and they're managing everything that's going around, the whole flow uh, of how things are working, and then that's that's really where you want to be. Uh, but yeah, so th they, they love the fact that celebrities are getting paid to do it because it just promotes their platform even more, gets more people on their platform because their favorite celebrities are, you know, being 
really active on Instagram or Facebook. So let's move on to number nine. We only have three more left. That was quite quick. But anyway, what countries to target? So pretty little things. He went off this. He went. He based his um point of this example but if pretty little things went to Pakistan they would sell out immediately just because they are a real brand they're like a known brand I'm pretty sure they're based in the UK but unlike your Shopify store if you went into Pakistan and you started trying to sell a, a t in Pakistan you started sending traffic over from Pakistan you probably won't get that many conversions you will get like a 0 0.05 conversion rate or 0 0.05 conversion rate sorry just because you aren't legit, you aren't anyone in their eyes, you're just a normal store, and there's nothing special about you. And considering um, Pakistan's not obviously one of the most richest countries in the world, you can't be expecting to make money from countries like that. But unless if you're a real brand, people generally want or genuinely want to buy from you, then you would sell out immediately just because you are who you are, and there's a demand for what you serve in that area. So for Shopify stores, um, you really can't sell in Pakistan, you can't really sell in India that much, you can't really sell in China that much. But if you were a real brand and you positioned yourself in a way that, you know, all our stuff is legit, it's not being drop shipped, we have uh, private label products and stuff like that, then you're more likely to convert this low quality traffic from third tier countries or tier three countries uh, way better. And that is just, you know, a point to prove why branding is super important. If you want to sustain build a sustainable business in the future, you have to build a brand. Because if you don't have a brand, then you just have a store. And if you just have a store, a store can die out overnight, really. Because you know, if Shopify takes you away, then no one cares about you. No one will remember you. All you have is just a, a social media page that no one cares about. So if you just have a store, then people are, are you're just relying on Shopify to, for staying up, for Obla to stay up, for AliExpress to stay up, for your whole business to run but if you have a brand a real brand with real inventory then you're not relying on anything you're just relying on your branding uh, to take you to the next level to help you scale so that's why branding is super important and that's something i'd definitely be building out in the future actually now i'm be i'm building out my brand right now right now i'm building my personal brand i'm also working on a store brand uh, it's going to be a print on demand one actually i'll talk about that later anyway but yeah, that's basically point number nine on the countries to target. He says when he's running ads, he always uh, tests them on tier one countries, which I've mentioned before, uh, which is also something I would do. Uh, some people do recommend doing worldwide targeting and excluding India, uh, China, Indonesia, and Pakistan and Iran. But I wouldn't recommend doing that. I just go with tier one countries because it's still way cheaper than just doing just UK or just US. Uh, but yeah. So, number 10, getting verified on Instagram. Let me just create another quick drink. <clears throat> Pure apple juice. Really good. Number 10, getting verified on Instagram. Now, if you've ever wanted to get verified on Instagram, you've probably known, and if you've tried to get verified on Instagram, you probably know that it's a ridiculously hard process just because they don't reply to you. It's almost as if they don't care about you because they don't reply to any of the messages, they don't tell you how to get verified, they don't tell you what you need to do to get verified. But recently, and I think this is around two months ago, three months ago, back in July or June, um, Instagram actually launched a feature where you could, um, let me just check. Yeah, so if you click on the settings button on your Instagram, uh, I can't do it now, I'm not on my phone. But if you click on the settings button uh, on your home screen page, your profile page on Instagram, uh, if you go uh, scroll down the right, you can see something called Get Verified. And if your brand is verified on Instagram, if your personal page is verified on Instagram, let's say if you're building a personal brand, it gives you a whole ton of reputability and it just immediately boosts your conversion rate. Because if you're seen as, um, if you're seen as a legit brand by Instagram, because you can only be verified by people who work there, people are way more likely to trust you. If you're just a random store. Uh, with 20,000 followers on Instagram, people aren't likely to trust you because what do they know about you? Nothing. You, you could have just bought those followers, your products could be fake, you could be a scammer. Or if you're verified, it gives you that extra sense, people with the extra sense of added security, which they need in order to like make their purchase feel even more secure and more safe. So getting verified on Instagram is a really big thing, and that's something I've been trying to do for the last couple of months now and I haven't quite got it yet because I think it's because whenever I send my passport in they think I'm underage or something like that and they don't like young people which is unbelievable so I need to do it in my dad's name but anyway 
you have to, what he says is try every single month. Keep on submitting the button to get verified. Just keep on saying, uh, submitting that that process uh, to get verified, and eventually you will get verified. And there has been a big surge recently because of everyone seeing you know the get verified button, and loads of people are submitting their details, their real name, their passport, and not everyone is getting accept accepted because. Obviously, if loads of people were verified, then Instagram wouldn't, you know, the verified icon would not be as unique. But if it's verified, then obviously you're way more trusted. And it's it's like a special thing to have. And Instagram want to value that, that verified icon. They don't want to misuse it. So they only give to a very a few amount of people. So one of the tips he did recommend uh, to me is to make sure your bio is clean and your feed is clean. If you have uh, inappropriate content on there, some dodgy videos or random content, you have to... They, they just won't verify you because you're really a no one to them. You're just another user. Um, and they can't, they don't value someone who is just just another user, just a normal person. They value people who are generally posting clean content, good content, consistent content, content that matches the rest of their feed. And another thing about your bio, he said, don't put a link in your bio that's linking to a different social media, I mean, a different platform. For example, um, when I tried to get verified my personal brand, I took away the uh, link in my bio from YouTube because uh, it was linked to my YouTube channel. The only reason I did that is because if Instagram sees I'm linking to YouTube, then they go, they go like, oh, he's linking to one of the, our competitors, you know, IGTV's competitors, so we won't verify him. So that's why I temporarily removed it from my bio. If you're linking to your store, I don't think they'll mind that because obviously it's your store, it's, a, it's associated with your brand. If you're linking to Facebook, I think they'll appreciate that, if anything, because you're just sending people around in that circle of their, their own social media platforms, which they'll like. But he said preferably don't put a link in your bio when you're trying to get verified because... They'll look at everything and they'll judge uh, by everything, whether you you get that privilege or not. So, number 11, and this is my final point, and this was a really good one. I hope you did enjoy that. Make sure to smash a like if you did enjoy so far. Smash that like button. But number 11 is setting up a social media marketing agency. So again, this guy runs a social media marketing agency. He has multiple clients. He's doing multiple six figures a month. And he actually told me the goal of his agency was... Uh, Look to sell in the next three years, he said. He wants to sell in the next three years once he grows it up. To build the sale business, he says. But anyway, uh, one tip that he does use uh, for looking to grow the clients that are are working with him and his agency, and there's multiple pay people in his agency. It's actually a really unique agency because he is one of the founders of it. He's like the, the head of marketing in Facebook. One of the other people in it is the head of marketing in YouTube, then there's the Twitter head, then there's like the Instagram head, and there's like multiple people who are the head of marketing in different uh, companies, different social media platforms. That's why the, the social media um, agency is going to be so unique because not many people are, you know, heads of marketing inside these different, uh, these different social media companies. So, you know, that's a huge advantage for them. But one thing he told me uh, for my agency, which I'm going to be building out uh, in the future or my personal brand, is to force people, force them, like don't reply to them, just force them to wait four to five months uh, in order to qualify your lead. So the reason he does that is because only the people that I really, really, really want to do business with you will wait four to five months just to see um, you to start uh you know advertising on behalf of them so if you want to qualify your leads just let them stay on the side let's say 100 people really want to work with you really want to work with you keep the message on a hold uh just tell them uh, we're not currently accepting anyone but um you can message us in like a month and we'll tell you if we are and t send that to 100 people and just see how many people will message you in a month uh, the next month and let's say it'll probably go down to 50 next month only 25 next month only 10, next month only 5, and those 5 are probably the people that really, really want to advertise you the most because they've just followed up with you every single month, and those are the people who your, you know, your ideal clients are probably going to be found in just because they really want to do business with you, because you don't want to, you don't want people who claim they want to do business with you, but they're actually not, that's not their intention, they just say that just because, you know, they're, 
if you're hyped out, hyped at a certain time of doing it, but they're not thinking about the long term and they're not making an informed decision about it. Because you don't want to take on someone as a client one month just to get rid of them in three months because they don't like what you're doing. You want to keep someone for the long term, but at a sustainable business, have a long retention rate or with your customers just because that will build out more rapport with them and will make you seem like a more reliable agency to work with. So another thing that he recommended and the pricing structure if you're setting up a social media marketing agency and if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically where you market on behalf of people and well something's happening with the Mac but it's basically when you're running ads and uh, managing the social media on behalf of other brands so uh, for example when Morrison's um, of Walmart wants to run an ad they have someone who you know makes the ad who films it and they post it on TV or whatever um, same like that, if Coca-Cola wants to promote something, they have an agency set up their ads, uh, create a video, have actors come in, sh drink, taste the feeling, or whatever. Uh, but this is what he, this guy focuses on is e-commerce brands, or he runs a Facebook ads for them, someone else runs a Snapchat ads, a Twitter ads, the Instagram ads, and so on. So that's basically what agency is. And um, yeah, so... When it comes to charging for your agency, don't charge based on the percent of profits you help bring in, which is something I was doing recently. I was charging 40% of the profit that I helped bring in for the starting Shopify stores. And then whatever 40% of the profit was, you know, based off the direct ad spend, um, the profit I got from the direct ad spend, um, he said it wasn't ideal because small stores wouldn't, prefer to have profit taken away from them especially especially at such a, a big rate just because profit is seen as a really key big thing for them um it's rather it's better to have a monthly fixed retainer when you're looking to bring in clients just because not only are you guaranteed income um but also uh, you, it seems to work better uh, according to him he says that's a better way to way to do it because you won't get involved in the how much profit you actually made and all the hassle between this and that so that's something I highly recommend you guys to do as well so guys that is basically it for this video I mean again this was only one hour of talking and um, I did mention in the beginning of this video that I had a potential opportunity to go in and spend one week with them in August and that was some sort of work experience thing which I don't want to do anyway but just because it's Facebook and I get to learn so much stuff about advertising I'd love to go back there um, and learn so much more about advertising giving you the inside of knowledge, the inside of value that no one has given you before on YouTube literally no one has gone inside Facebook headquarters in London and there's only two of them in London, or oh, in the UK actually and told you exactly what the head marketing has revealed to me that's why my channel is unique. That's why you should subscribe to my channel right now. Just click the subscribe button and just subscribe to my channel. You, you just really need to subscribe. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. And yep, yeah, best hour of my life ever spent. I mean, I didn't even know I was going there in the morning. I just thought I was meeting up with a guy and that was good at Facebook ads. I had no idea I was going to be there. Uh, but yeah, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like down below. We're going to wrap this one up in real person mode real quick. And yep, yeah, I'll update you um, near the time of June about whatever is going to happen with that work experience thing, the week in Facebook, uh, that might potentially happen. I just asked him, can I? Just because, you know, if you don't ask, you don't get. So I just asked to see what he would say. He said yes, so I'm stoked for that. Well, let's see what happens anyway. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. Jump into real person mode and wrap this one up. Facebook headquarters in London. At Facebook right now, with a bunch of experts and a guy with 15 mil followers is here. Super cool. Just finishing up at Facebook ad headquarters. Amazing time. Massive building. That's amazing. We learned so much stuff today, and it was we saw so much stuff today, and I have so much to tell you guys. It's really amazing. I'll be creating a YouTube video, hopefully today, maybe tomorrow. 
about what I learned and you guys are going to find a lot of value in that. That was a great video, great time and yeah. Okay guys, so I hope you did enjoy that secret insider knowledge video of exactly what I learned, what I did and everything that went on inside Facebook headquarters in London. And if you did, make sure to drop a like down below, hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel because I'm posting more awesome content like this every single day now and you just get the most uniquest, the coolest content from me so make sure you subscribe to my channel also hit the cool and notification bell icon so that you're notified every time I drop another awesome video and you can jump on these awesome videos as quickly as you can so that being said, I'm sure you guys do have a ton of questions so feel free to drop them down in the comment section down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and again, uh, there's a great opportunity, a great experience going there and actually I've sealed, oh, well I think I've sealed at least um, a week over there in July, uh, I spent one week inside of Facebook, which is going to be interesting, oh, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, what I do there, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely be on the marketing side at least, at least that's what I think, uh, but anyway, also hit me up on Instagram at alexphilip underscore one, if you have any questions, make sure to follow me there as well, and yeah, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed, and peace. Level up our lifestyle if we love the game